The real estate industry can benefit from artificial intelligence at every stage, from construction to managing tenants. Join me on this video to discover 18 applications of artificial intelligence in this industry. Hi there, I'm Calvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI show. In this one, we will explore the potential of artificial intelligence in the real estate industry. And while many other industries have aggressively adopted, adopted AI as a novel technology to optimize their operations, to bring more value to their customers, real estate is kind of falling behind. Okay, so they haven't moved through this adoption, at least not a, at, a, at a such aggressive uh, pace. And here in this video, we will explore why and what potential applications we can uh, easily tackle with AI. So let's start with the four main stakeholders, the four main consumers in the real estate industry. The first one is the construction companies, and not only the company itself, but also the individual contributors like engineers, architects, etc. The second one is the realtors and agencies, okay? All well, the agencies involved here are matchmaking uh, buyers with sellers. Then we have the real, the, the real estate investors, either individuals, professional, and finally we have the property managers. Of course, all of these four consumers serve at an end market, which is the tenant, which are the tenants or the home buyers. Okay. But AI will benefit mainly this middle line here of construction, uh, realtors and agencies, investors and property managers. Let's see what potential applications can we solve or can we address for each one of these. And if you like this video in the description, there is a bonus content where I will show you the main insights from each one of these applications. Okay. So let's start with construction companies. Okay. So in construction, the main thing that we can do is optimizing the process itself from the design, for example, automating design or bringing different alternative designs, giving it a baseline model. And this has been done recently, like with genetic algorithms and this kind of technologies, but it is still super exploratory. Okay? It's super early stage. I will say it's more of an academic work and not such an industrialized version. But there are other applications that are already kind of closer to the market. For example, digitizing blueprints, okay? Even the uh, uh, model blueprint digitizing it, or even estimating the cost from the blueprint. So if I have already a digitized blueprint, what is the estimated cost? for each one of the type of materials that I will have, like bricks or ceilings or whatever. So this is a blueprint, gives me the amount of materials that I will need to, to address this, this, this building. And finally, we can, we can work on the inspection and compliance part of the process of the building process. For example, with computer vision, understanding if there is any issue on the construction, if they are following the procedures, the security concerns, etc. So here, these are the three main areas of application of AI in real estate in construction. So creating new designs, I'm facilitating the estimates of the of the, of the cost, the cost estimates or okay, or even optimizing them, and then making sure the construction is done as expected. Okay. Then we move to the realtor's parts or the or the agencies, the more commercial part of real estate. And here most of the applications are around optimizing the customer journey, okay, of potential tenants, buyers, sellers, etc. So if you want to know like a lot of potential use cases, go to our video on 11 applications of AI in marketing and may, like all of those ideas can apply here. I brought you here the main ones that I have seen use in, in real estate. The first one is lead scoring. Okay. So if I have a tenant, if I have a potential buyer, scoring them according to their willingness to buy. So how serious is this potential buyer or this potential seller? Then of course is property recommendation. And you see these already implemented at the multiple listing websites, head sites uh, on the internet. Okay. So if you go to any website that recommends you like properties, most likely there is a recommender engine behind. Then you have seller chart. Okay. And this is a big issue for realtors because they do uh, a lot of work, you know, acquiring these sellers or these properties on their portfolio. And then the risk of their, of their leaving because you didn't sell their property on time is a major risk. And AI yeah, can help you even find who is most likely to leave. So we can re re-engage on, on this process. Okay. okay. Then of course, optimizing the listing, like what is the best text? What should you say about the property? You know, if I have a prompt, a text uh, that describes a property, how appealing is it? And here you know, we have all this book of ChatGPT, of AI, et cetera, generating text automatically. So how can we generate the best text that we attract the most, the, the, the best potential buyers, tenants, etc. as well as what are the, main, the, the most, the best photos to describe. Is property. So if uh, if I have a photo, how good is that? Is this photo to attract 
uh, my my pro my my prospects like my tenants okay finally what is the best time to contact okay and the best time for to contact for a visit for an appointment or to readdress a potential buyer because we know that for example with investors they buy from time to time so you know lead scoring at a longer scale and planning visits okay so as you can see here or realtors and agencies is mainly about bringing the product to the end consumer in the best way in the most efficient way and you know moving them through this customer journey of buying and uh, renting an, a property okay and then we move to the real to the real estate investors either individual investors or professional investors all of us invest in real estate myself and all of us care about the same kind of things mainly automated valuation models having a, so an objective estimate of how much is this house uh, should cost they okay, were the fair price for this house and there's a special interesting use case here which is not just what is the value of this house now but what is the after repair value so if i buy this house for let's say a number 100k okay and then i change this bathroom i change these windows etc what will be the after repair value what will be the final price so i can decide and the ai can suggest me what are the potential improvements i can do because you know the trade-off between the cost and the benefit that i will get is positive in the end okay so this is like the main application that you can do that you can tackle in ai for realtors will be estimating properly estimating the, the after repair value and the cost involved in that process okay then of course as investors we care about a lot of kpis and, and objectively estimating them is super tricky and it's a manual work like it's it's extremely complex so automating all of these KPIs is relevant. For example, yields, occupancy rates, forecasting these indicators is actually relevant, as well as identifying market, tra market trends. So which markets are still warming up so we can go there and start investing there, okay? So identifying not just which the, the current trends of the market, the current statistics of the market, but how are they going to evolve over the next years? Yeah, it's like something that as investors we care a lot. And of course, the final part, which is more on the customer journal part, closing deals. So what is the, the lowest price that will likely be accepted for a property and find the best financing strategy for this one. So optimizing all the deal stage is a, a place where AI can adjust, can assist investors. Finally, for property managers, we have these use cases. The first one, the first two are actually about sharing of your tenants, okay? And sharing is a big issue because basically when you when a, a tenant leaves, you have to renovate. You have a vacancy, and so you don't, you don't have rents. You don't collect rents, so it's a big issue. And there are two main causes of charm, as you have seen in my marketing video on eleven applications of marketing, near, uh, which are voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary is when the when the tenant leaves because they do not renew the contract, right? Okay, and okay, this is an issue. But the main issue for investors is involuntary charm, which is when they stop paying rent and we have to basically force them to leave the apartment okay this is this is the main the main problem but forecasting this and may more than forecasting uh, avoiding this to happen so proposing the right uh, terms the right uh, payment plans for each tenant when they fall into this category is something super critical where ai can support you or to, or to any property manager or to any investor actually and then, of course, optimize uh, forecasting occupancy rates. And this is especially relevant not for long term rentals, but for short term ones like Airbnbs. And forecasting repair demands is another use case that is quite relevant, especially when you're working at scale. Okay, when you have to you know, forecast how much of plumbing you will need to do over the next year so you can adjust your pricing with your hand metal, with your, with your contractors. Okay. And then, of course, optimizing repairs. Okay. If I have to do these 20 new repairs next week, how should I do them? You know, whatever, it's it, like optimizing packing very well the schedule of my handyman, of my craftsman, so I can lower the cost of these, the cost and the operational uh, hassle of this, of this process. Okay. So we have these 18 use cases where you can apply AI. Um, we have experience on some of them, for example, on the construction part, we have already worked on inspection and compliance detection. Then for the realtors, we have worked on property recommendations. Actually, uh, we want an open innovation challenge from all advice on the largest uh, real estate fund in Europe. Um, 
Then for real estate investors, we have worked on automated valuation models and forecasting other KPIs. And for property managers, actually we want a lot of innovation challenges here for optimizing repairs. Okay, so avoiding all the manual labor involved in, in scheduling and identifying the issues uh, with the apartment. And we are actually working on this right now. I'm also able to record a video early in the, near in the future in the future about how we solve this problem. Okay, so we have work on use cases all over the place here in, in, in real estate. And from this experience, we have collected the main challenges of applying AI in your state, and that's what I'm going to present uh, now. So if you like this video so far, please remember to like, thumb, give us a thumbs up. So let's move now to the main challenges of applying AI to real estate. And the first one is lack of reliable data. What do I mean by reliable data? For example, if you if you look at these multiple instance sites, you will have the listing price, but you will have the actual closing price, the sale price, the price that the person paid for this property. And that's an issue if you are, for example, building automated valuation models, because you won't know the actual value that the people paid for this for this apartment, for this property. Okay. And so the data that we have, the public data that we have is very low quality. For example, um, based on list, which is listing dates, which is a, a quite key, key uh, relevant KPI for investors. Most likely, for example, if you, if, you, if you track these listings, you will see the same property appearing and disappearing, and you don't know if it was because it was read that, you know, or because uh, it's, or even if it is the same property of, of the R duplicates. So data in terms of quality, for, at least from these public sites, is terrible. Okay, yeah, this is a main limiting factor for applying AI in real estate. The second one is market fragmentation. Okay, so in real estate, you will have like very large players. Of course, you have REITs and you have like uh, real estate funds, but still they have, most of them have a limited scale. So you have like a long tail distribution of investors. You have a lot of like people I need, like individual investors that do not invest on thousands of properties, only a few. Um, and this is a main problem because you cannot aggregate a lot of high quality data because you don't have very much room to optimize. Okay, so if you don't have hundreds of properties to optimize, then there's not much value of optimizing or on working on internal optimization uh, of these properties. If you, if you watch our video on studies for AI monetization, you know what I'm talking about. I will leave uh, the link in the end. Okay, so lack of quality data and market fragmentation. Then we have the third one, which is each and every property is unique. Okay. It's not like stock, the stock market where each stock is, you know, like each individual stock is the same. Okay. Each one that you buy, they all have the same value. You know that you're, you're buying uh, one share from Google and that's it. It's a share for Google. They are, they are all equal in quality, right? In real estate, it's actually, it's the opposite. Okay. Even if you have two apartments inside the same building, the maintenance that those apartments had in the past, even the orientation, the, the floor, like everything can make a, a, an apartment change or, on value. And this is quite tricky because there are a lot of variables. Most of these variables are very subjective and actually are not is easy to measure. Okay. So it's something that sometimes is on the brains of the buyers and not necessarily something that you can properly track with high confidence. Okay. Of course, there are some big patterns. For example, in the U S people like a part, uh, like properties nearby good schools. Yeah. Some European cities you want properties nearby metro stations and this kind of public transportation, for example, but it's quite subjective and changes from market to market. So objectively quantifying the value of a property is super tricky. It's not a trivial task and this is a main issue. Okay. And then the last problem, uh, the last challenge for applying AI in the United States, which is each experiment is quite expensive. Okay. If I am optimizing a customer journey for a digital sales platform where each and uh, where each subscription, if a couple of bucks, it's okay. Okay. If I waste a few leads, uh, try, uh, trying things, exploring things in real estate, that's not the case, right? So every property, even if you are targeting uh, a low end margin, like a low end uh, segment, uh, like low middle class, something like that. Even in that setting, it will be a few hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. And if you are doing this massively, each experiment, each fail, uh, each failure will cost you a big amount of money. Okay. So this is the main limitation for applying AI over real estate uh, use cases, at least in a fully autonomous way. 
course, there are other options. Like you can do use AI to assist you know, humans, okay, to give them further support instead of fully automating it end to end, okay. So, how can you tackle? How can you actually build a, or benefit from AI in real estate? You have two options. Either you are a large player in the market, like a real estate fund, for example, or you build a product that serves this highly fragmented market and unifies it into a single platform that brings them all these benefits. Okay? Again, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Remember, there is a bonus content down here. See you soon. Bye bye.